uh, preseason number two rank here in the conference. Do you feel that is appropriate for where they sit, being the, the talent that they have offensively, or what, what are your thoughts on the standings? I'm actually surprised they're not number one. You have Will Greer. You have a lot of good first-line talent. I think they have some explosive skill guys, really good offensive tackles. Oklahoma obviously has Lincoln Riley back, but no Baker Mayfield. I think Oklahoma's really good. I just don't see the same level of star power. And to me, this is the year for West Virginia. I think they have everything they need. As long as they can stay relatively healthy, I think they should be the favorite in the Big 12. And in terms of offense, it seems they have, with all of the returners, the top offense in the league as well? Oh, yeah. I mean, you got a great trigger man. They, they make a lot of big plays. Two really good receivers, a good offensive line. I mean, that's everything Dana Holgerson needs. Good young stable of backs. You know, they got a kid from South Florida who's really dynamic, who had a big spring. I think that this is a team that should win 10 games. In terms of Will Greer, he's West Virginia's Heisman candidate. They've been putting that campaign out there a lot. Big 12 preseason offensive player of the year. What does he have to do to stay in the national conversation, uh, Heisman, uh, on, on those fronts as well? Do you feel that he can perform up to that level, all this preseason hype? I think the numbers are going to be there with him to be a, high, a legit Heisman contender. I think the biggest thing for them is they can't stub their toe and lose to a team they probably should beat. I think as long as they're a top 10 team, to me, he's going to be a, a legit Heisman candidate because when you look, Baker's gone. There's a lot of a lot of good running backs who are no longer there. This is a defensive line dominated uh, 2018. You're gonna have to have some skill guys emerge. He's gonna put up big numbers. I just think it's a question of can they win enough? If they win the way I think they will, I think he's gonna go to New York as a, you know to get to the Heisman, and then from there, I think it's just you know it's kind of how the cards play out. See if you if you get to New York, can you actually win it? David Sills last year was really his first full year at the position. Blinnikoff Award finalist. What are your thoughts on him? Where does he fit in among the nation's best receivers? You know, he's a great story. Everybody knows, you know, committed to Lane Kiffin as a, as a kid quarterback. It didn't work out. He's really talented, really athletic, and he's worked at it, and he's really football smart, and he put up big numbers. You know, what's interesting is they have another guy on there in Gary Jennings who's big and physical and really explosive, and he's a great receiver too. So I think that, you know, it helps that David has this great chemistry with Will Greer. And I think the fact that you have two of these guys plus those running backs, I mean, they're going to put up huge numbers because Dana Holgerson's really about as good as there is in terms of designing things and being really creative. And WVU working the tight end in a little more this year. How can that benefit this offense? Well, I think it's just one more dimension to take advantage because they last year you look at they would hit a lot of shots downfield. And defenses know that. I mean, I think they know that you can't sit on short stuff. They're going to throw it over your head a lot of times, especially with, you know, Sills is 6'4", Gary Jennings is 6'2", 6'3". Those are big targets, and they have a tight end, and, that, and those guys who can work in the middle of the field, I mean, that just makes them that much more effective because the field's going to be open, I think. On defense haven't been getting the same attention the offense has has been getting did lose a lot of guys do you feel that they are kind of in an underdog role or maybe Tony Gibson can get this unit back to where it was a couple years ago well, I think they're always going to be in an underdog role I mean a couple years ago I think Tony had like three starters back and they were actually pretty good uh, you know as long as you have David Long he's probably the best defensive player Tony's had there in a long time and his toughness you know, he didn't have he missed the first month of the season last year I think having him back to kind of build around, they're strong up the middle. I, I think the area with them, which is a question mark, is how good are they on the defensive line? To me, that's the question of, is West Virginia good enough and big enough up front on the defensive side of the ball where they can be a playoff team more than it's one thing to win the Big 12. It's another thing to be good enough and physical enough to be a playoff team. Continuing on that defensive theme, is that the thing that Big 12 teams have to do to catch Oklahoma? Yeah, I, I just think, you know, Oklahoma's not great on defense either. I mean, they have probably personnel that you would look at and go, okay, you've got more, more guys who pass the eyeball test, especially when it comes to the big people in the, in the front seven. West Virginia's had good DBs. They've recruited well. They've developed well. It's just the, the front guys, I think, eventually – you know, the margin for error is smaller at West Virginia because of that. So, and even some of the bigger guys they've had, you know, Adam Schuler on paper 
you know, should have been a guy where he could be a difference maker, but just some of the intangibles maybe were lacking there. And, you know, you have some try hard guys in there, but I just think you need more physical, big body guys who are gonna, gonna bring it, you know, every day at practice, because I think that's something that's, that's hard to replicate if you don't have it. And taking that on to the next step, that was obviously Oklahoma's shortcoming in the national playoffs last year. Is that the thing that any Big 12 team needs to do? I mean, I know the reputation is they don't play any defense at all, but does it just have to incrementally improve for them to finally get a national title? Yeah, I, I think, though, I was at that Rose Bowl game. Oklahoma was really close to winning. You know, it wasn't like Georgia blew them off the field. It was looking the opposite direction. I think of Oklahoma and Baker Mayfield and that, that offense goes to play Alabama. I think they might be the national champs. And then your Big Ten, Big 12 narrative is, is, shot, is shot to heck. And it's like all of a sudden it's like, hey, these guys just won a national title. I don't care how many dra NFL draft picks they didn't pr produce. I mean, that would speak to a lot of it. And, uh, you know, I look, you know, we did a couple of TCU games. TCU has a lot of big athletic guys, you know, that they've developed on the D-line. And I think that's kind of what a lot of, you know, top teams look like. Now, do they have all the parts at the right places? Maybe not. But uh, there are teams like that in the, in the conference. It's just, you know, you almost have to catch lightning in a bottle a little bit. Oklahoma had Baker Mayfield. And Lincoln's a great, Lincoln Rye's a great play caller. And that covered up some, some inconsistency on defense. But I think... You know, the gap between some of these top teams isn't as huge as everybody thinks just because they look at the recruiting rankings. I mean, people forget, like, o Oregon, without a lot of top recruits, almost won a national title. They came within the last, you know, a field goal away, last second field goal. So it's, you know, it's, it's more realistic than I think people like to give it credit for in the offseason.